Thank you both. Ah, yay. Okay, thank you both for speaking to me. This show is really fun. So what I wanted to know is it's, it's an adventure. There's some comedy in there. You could say maybe it's a leading up to a rom-com-ish feel to it. What were the elements? I know you guys created it, but what were the elements that you really wanted to stick to when it came to this show? Good question. Yeah. Um, I, I'll say, uh, you know, the the idea of like a character who changes and evolves, I, I think was like really important uh, to us. You know, we start off, you know, with Haley as, you know, someone who's like, has a trouble, you know, stepping out outside of her comfort zone and, you know, could be shy and awkward. But then we know that in the future, she's destined for these great things. It was like, uh, we thought it'd be a cool exercise. How do we get from point A to point B and, you know, really have an evolution of this character? So then from that standpoint, did you work backwards or was it more forward? Well, you, you knew where she was because it's in the future. So was there certain marks that you wanted to make along the way to, in order to reflect that future version of herself? Sort of, yeah. We didn't, there's not necessarily, it wasn't a, like a singular uh, mm -hmm. goal we wanted to get to. We sort of wanted to enjoy the process and we definitely came up with, with several kind of big swing tentpole things where a big change happens either in their relationship or with knowledge about the future or the risks of of uh, her failing at her at her task of of completing her list, um, things like that. So you know, the great thing about TV is it's sort of that that adventure is the fun part, right? You're not mm -hmm. not like a movie where everything is sort of set up to get get to the one payoff. Although we obviously have so, several things we would like to we want to pay off when we before the series is over. But um, we 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 like to spend our time sort of in that sandbox of of getting to that point. Right. Now, was there any kind of, I don't guess, space travel kind of rules that you had? Because if you, you know where your future is and how you have to get there, does that impact the journey? A little bit. We we purposely didn't want to be, make it a show about time travel. Right. Um, we like the idea of sort of being able to kind of put ourselves in Haley's shoes. You know, one element we really like is, is shows and, and movies where it's a, a regular normal character that is put into these crazy extraordinary circumstances. So we really wanted to kind of focus the show on Haley in present day, constantly dealing with, you know, stuff can come in from the future or she can see how what she's doing maybe will affect the future sort of through the time glitches and things that we see. Um, but she herself kind of remains grounded sort of in our, for the most part, um, right. But we always like to, you know, we bend the rules. We don't try to be any, we don't want anything to be formulaic, but um, for the most part, we we kind of stay with her and her sort of linear journey uh, as she does her best to not screw things up in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so also with that being said, why a list of things? We thought there was um, a funny idea because she she never thought that this list, you know, she in a lot of ways never gave it a second thought. You know, we, I think we all do that. We make these big plans and then procrastinate, at least I do. So we thought that was funny. She, you know, if there was something that she maybe wanted to do, but didn't, you know, didn't want to do right then, she would write it down on the list. And then, you know, just this exercise in procrastination now becomes I don't know, really important. I think mm -hmm. that was that was funny to us. And, um, you know, the, the list was just a nice device for that. You know, it kind of gives us a, a goal for an episode, but it's also a goal that's related to her personality and, you know, maybe something that she has trouble stepping outside of herself. So I don't know, we, we, we've had a lot of fun with the list. Yeah. There's also something just comedy wise, we said, we found really funny about having these huge world altering stakes on some of the most you know, small little, like she has a list item that's spend all my old gift cards, but that's now important to the future of the world. You know, we liked, we liked the kind of level of the comedy that we were able to get out of that. Right. Now I'm also, I love the music behind it as well. We have obviously the theme songs, there's songs within the show itself. There was a nice musical theater number that was an inspiration of other songs. Can you talk about finding a song and the lyrics that fit appropriately to what both is emotionally and what's going on right there on screen. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we sort of have done songs in different ways depending on the episode, but it sort of started with in the in the first episode, uh, Nick and I wrote the, the, the song for the Tunnel of Love sequence, which we thought would just be really funny to kind of make it even more awkward if the song that was playing was literally about kissing your best friend as Haley's trying to avoid what what's probably inevitable. Um, but, uh, so in, during the pilot process, you know, Disney sort of found a bunch of composers that were made, that could give us kind of takes on how they would um, kind of make that that song. And and the take that came from our the composers we got uh, Matthew Tischler and Andrew Underberg was just hilarious and made it so much better than than we ever could have imagined. So we met with them and and we quickly found out they have the exact same sensibilities as us. They're hilarious guys. They can they have the range to do all the genres we could ever have possibly imagined and more. Um, and, and th again, they're just really funny. So, so, so whatever the scene called for, we have some sort of sweet, sincere stuff. We have the, the, uh, Haley and Scott going on to an old, uh, kids like Barney kind of show. Uh, and we have them, you know, uh, going to a K-pop concert, you know, all sorts of crazy things. And, and every time the, 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 the composers came up with stuff that was just awesome and, and and great and most of the time either they'll write the lyrics or the writers will sort of give them a guide and they'll they'll sort of collaborate on that but uh it's it's been a great partnership yeah and casting ali also was a big um a big step in that you know it music wasn't uh originally as as a big of a part of the the, the show but you know with ali who has this amazing voice and you know <laughs> is a disney princess um you know it kept becoming more and more and, and, you know, the music, like Devin said, has been so fun on the show. It's just, we want to fit it in every episode now. Right. Now I'm fascinated by the, the aspect of the producing versus the you know, animation versus live action. Can you talk about the differences? Is it more, is it more complicated? Is it easier that way because it's animated? They're in a lot of ways, they're very different. In a lot of ways they're similar. I mean, in our minds, a good story is a good story, no matter where you, what medium you're you're doing it in. You know, as long as the characters and the overall story make sense and and are good, then then it'll work out. From a from a from a production standpoint, it's just I don't know. There's certain benefits and 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 uh, uh, I guess fallbacks in each one. But like you know, our last couple of shows were were live action shows where. Uh, there are multi cams too, and our last show actually had a live audience, so we, it was great to be able to get like immediate feedback on on like the jokes and stuff. Like we would literally mm -hmm. have an audience laugh or not <laughs> if you if you tried something on the set and you could make a change right then and there if you needed to. Uh, Animation is much more of a slow burn. Uh, you know, we we sort of write things in the writers' room, we get a little bit of feedback, but then you know we then you go to a storyboard stage, and 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 it takes several months to animate. So you know especially with the pandemic when a lot of stuff was done over zoom it, it, it we were really craving a lot of you know sort of feedback uh to kind of allow us to sort of tinker and make stuff as funny as it possibly could which we eventually got but it took several months with animation versus the sort of immediate feedback you get in in, in live action but um that said you know there's certain things we can do in animation we can never have done on our last couple of shows you know we were sort of limited to two and a half sets before and now we're, we're we can go to the moon or we can go underwater or we can have a professor show up from 50 years in the future, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of on a whim, which is fantastic for storytelling. Okay. Now, uh, there are some side characters that either they drop in, they drop out that I absolutely love. We have Beta, who's always there, um, who's like the guide. So I would assume he's like the guide of, of the show, really in for Haley. But then there was also AC, who was the annoying blonde kid <laughs> in one of the episodes. Where do you find the inspiration to have these kind of, I guess they would be the antagonist a little bit for each series or I'm sorry, each show episode. Sorry. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, episode by episode AC was, is a favorite character of ours just because he's so, you know, such a thorn in, in Haley's side and in every way. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if you'd call her an, an antagonist, but you know, in the, the first episode, we find that, you know, Haley's got this, I guess we'd call her a rival in Christine the Hat Queen. Right. And the one thing, you know, different that we wanted to do with her is that she's just the nicest person in the world. You know, we wanted to totally play against the trope of like the stereotypical, you know, mean girl, popular girl, you know, like she does not have a mean bone in her body and is it is super, super nice all the time. So, 
you know, it's sort of episode to episode, uh, you know, whoever kind of we meet as a as a foil, but we do like to, you know, sort of play against uh, play against type and and have fun with it. Can you talk about the influences of the animation style? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, there's a lot of influences, but we really did want just sort of a bright, positive world to kind of convey the message of a, a world worth fighting for. You know, she's got a lot of stuff mm -hmm. on her plate and we kind of wanted to be in a place where you're like, there's real stakes here if it were to go away. Um, mm -hmm. Nick and I both grew up in small, wintry climates uh, and always loved shows that were pretty and bright and specifically took place near the beach. <laughs> uh, Saved by the Bell was one of our favorite live action shows, which was awesome. They got a, they were high school by the beach, which we, which we thought was just great. Um, DuckTales was another one that was sort of a cartoon version where it was really bright and positive and, you know, they were sort of on the water too. So like, I don't know, we, we just kind of wanted to come up with our own version of just that beautiful place where no matter what's happening, you're just, you know, it's just kind of nice to sort of be there and, and, and enjoy the eye candy. There's there's also the family element in it. We had the dad was introduced. We had Dwayne and Johnson, which was hilarious to me. Um, talk about, can you talk about the importance of incorporating the family into the show and kind of how that helps Haley's progress? Yeah, uh, it it was, uh, it, they, they've been really fun to write for. Um, and, you know, I think it feels like, like a real family and, and uh, Julie Bowen and Cooper Andrews who play Haley's parents have mm -hmm. brought so much and yeah, Dwayne and Johnson as, as her little brothers, you know, we, we keep, as the series progresses, we find more ways to, to use them. They're, you know, they're just great as these little kind of tyrants, uh, you know, sometimes, and they've got like super strength uh, at some, some points, but they're also really cute. And um, yeah, they've been, they've been really fun to, to work into episodes. Was there an episode from either or both of you that you just really loved how it just in it encapsulate the meaning of the show? I would say there's an episode coming up, uh, I think sort of toward the middle of the, the season, which um, it all takes place in Haley's backyard, but her list item is to throw a cool party. And she is not a, a, a cool, popular person, uh, you know, as she's kind of got these dorky tendencies and she throws this party that's, the, you know, seems like it's going to be a disaster. And then the pop most popular girl in school shows up and they want to play this like board game that's too mature for some people, but it's like just this very tense kind of thing, but it, it all takes place uh, just with our, our cast of characters in a, in a backyard and, and seeing the dynamics that take place are, are really interesting to me. I'm excited for that one. No, so I was really interested. I love the different personalities that that's incorporated into the series. And so I wanted to know, do you write you have them set and then you write around that, including like the situations that they're in, or is it the situations first and then you bring in the personality or the characters? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the characters are sort of, they'll define how they react to the situation, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll usually come up with, you know, episodically and, and, and I guess series wise, sort of ideas of what we want to have happen, but then, Haley will react to something completely different than Scott would, right? If he finds out they're going to have to spend the night, uh, you know, you know, in a haunted house or something like, you know, Haley's going to be terrified. Scott's going to be thrilled, you know, so that we can, you can use the character personalities to sort of dictate um, how, how, how they'll react and then kind of how to complicate the situations based on mm -hmm. that. Okay, and, and speaking of Scott, I love how he brings in the complicated element to the show and to the series, but you also balance the, the true friendship that they have with each other. So can you talk about the inclusion of Scott? Was that just to kind of put a, a, a little hurdle about for, for Haley accomplishing this list? Or was there much more to just her overall personality and development for both of them? We saw it as more, yeah. We we thought, it, you know, it's really sort of a buddy, um, you know, comedy that you know could be a romance. It's a Jim and Pam in the Office of se season one of the Office kind of kind of vibe. Um, so you know, we really 
the, the neat thing about them is they're personality wise opposite in a lot of ways. So like Devin was saying, you know, they, we, we can have them do these crazy, um, thrust them into these crazy situations and they'll have completely different reactions. But at the end of the day, they're both such sweet people that, that, you know, they come together and, and also really complement each other well. So, you know, we, we see Scott as, um, you know, really a, a big integral part of the season that's on this journey with Haley. You also talk about the development. Like, when did this start in terms of the idea and then putting it to paper and then really realizing that we have something here? It started way back before the pandemic, which seems like a lifetime ago. Um, we were, yeah, we were, we were lucky enough to, to, to be invited to develop over here at, at Disney TVA. And, and, and we sort of just were putting our heads together with, with a show that we thought would be fun. And, and first came up with like a scene, the germ of a scene that was, we thought it'd be funny if a professor came from the future and it, it showed up in a, a normal per, a girl's room with like literally two minutes to explain everything that this kid needed to know. But they constantly got distracted with, you know, the professor seeing things in their bedroom that were she was nostalgic about or Haley wondering about, you know, things that happen in the future, you know, are Taco Tuesday still a thing or whatever that is. So like the whole the whole the whole scene ends up devolving into these tangents when there's literally two minutes to save the world. Um, so we thought we thought that scene was really funny and a version of it sort of ended up in, in the first episode. Um, but we kind of just kept building off of that to 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 sort of say, well, what's, what's the most fun kind of character to, to learn that, that she's destined for greatness and, and what else, what, you know, what, what would complicate that and et cetera, et cetera. And so that was sort of the, that was sort of the first germ. And what was the, I wanted to know, instead of making, why this an animation instead of live action, because you've both done live action and animation. So why did you feel this worked better as animated? I don't know that it was definitely a, a, it couldn't be done one way or the other so much as, mm -hmm. you know, a good story is a good story in our minds, a good show will make a good show. When we had the idea, you know, we were trying to develop something for animation. So we, you, mm -hmm. you sort of just let yourself imagine, well, how can animation make that this version of this show better? And that was things like, she, it, we can do it where she lives on the beach and we can do it where this professor can show up out of a, out of a closet from the future, or we can even show the future if we needed to, or these fantastical devices that'll show up later on and things or like that. Walking, talking uh, teddy bear smartphone. Uh, <laughs> exactly, know, yeah. It's something we couldn't do in live action. So yeah, so it's just sort of like, yeah, the perfect version of, uh, the best version of the show, I think, was an animated version. Was there a favorite character that you really gravitated towards? It's not Haley or Scott. Hard to not love Beta. He's really is one of the funniest characters. I'm also a huge fan of Becker, Scott's little sister, who's just sort of a the town troublemaker and has no filter. Um, um, and I'll say, yeah, uh, Christine the Hat Queen is is one of my favorites. Just her, I don't know. It's such a different take on on the uh, departure from the tropes of that kind of character and. Um, Oh, there've been a lot of really good guest stars that we've had too. Um, you know, I'm sure Stephen can send you the list, but um, <laughs> you know, Mick Mick Foley was uh, played a, a wrestler character. Um, uh, Weird Al we had on the show playing our Chip Dingle, who's the heir to a, a, a potato chip uh, fortune, and I don't know. We we've we've had a lot of really good guest cast on the show. So, how do you go about finding the right voices? actor for the character are you writing with your voices in mind and hope that you can get them or is it just we see everyone and hope it's a fit sometimes with guest characters we'll maybe have a, a, a sort of a, a voice or, or type in our heads but um uh, with the original story no we, we just were writing you know what we thought was the best version of these characters um mm -hmm. into the pilot and then uh disney's their first round of auditions they sent us Nick and I immediately agreed that that our two favorites were Ali for for Haley and uh, Manny for Scott. Um, it was just one of those things where they just you, you felt them as the characters. They're both incredible actors. They're both um, um, really sincere and and you like them. Just you know they just have very likable uh, voices. And a Ali brought the added element of of not only was she a princess but she could sing, which was something that was a huge asset. Um, and then Manny is just hilarious and 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 so unique in his rhythms and his comedy that like he can 
he can make things funny that you would never even intend to be funny because he's just so so enthusiastic and 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 talented. So I wanted to know, you know, you guys have been working together for a while now. Uh, you've worked on many projects, both separately and together. What would you say has been the best lesson that you've learned throughout your career that you've applied to this current project or other projects before? Well, we haven't actually done anything separately. So uh, it's all been together. So it's been a long, <laughs> long journey. I would just say, um, you know, that we really check our egos at the door, you know, and that goes for our working relationship. Um, you know, if the other person has an idea it, and, you know, they're excited about it and it's not ours, that, that's the idea that's, you know, that, that gets in. And we've applied that to our, our writing staffs and our crews and everything too. You know, we just, we just want the best sort of final product. And, you know, we take our egos uh, and it was a learning process, but, you know, we, this is everyone's got, got to pull together to tell the, the best story that we can. And, and I think that's a lesson that I've learned. For you, Devin. Uh, yeah, I'd say the same thing that, you know, we're, we're happy to, a good idea can come from anywhere is sort of the, is sort of the idea. And we, we've sort of learned that if you hire talented people that are also just good people, that'll make, they'll make a great sh show. Even, you know, sometimes we've, we've, we, you don't necessarily hire off credits or anything like that. Like both of our directors or first time directors, Kat, Kat Harmon Mitchell and Leslie Park, that that hadn't done that yet, but they were so good at, uh, Kat actually helped us on the uh, sort of fixing the, some of the boards in our pilot stage, just elevated the material that we just knew that we had to have her on the show. Um, and, and same with Leslie, like they just kind of bring a, an energy and a talent and they're just genuinely good people that like, that we were just so happy we were able to get them. And that and that's sort of this, I guess, we, what we've learned over all our shows that have done well is just those kind of talented people that are good people, whether they have the credits yet or not, like those are the kind of people you really want to uh, work with. Thank you so much for speaking to me. I really like the show. Thank oh, you. Good. Thank you. Really nice to meet you, Dana. You yeah. too.